So I'm going to show how to use RTL AMR um, to calculate your home's uh, past energy usage over the past few hours. Uh, so you need to make sure your home has a power meter. Um, and this program mostly works on ITRON meters that are radio enabled. Um, one way to usually tell is if the meter has a FCC ID um, on it. Um, if any piece of technology has an FCC ID on it, it means it's broadcasting uh, radio waves. And then you're also going to need, um, upon looking on the meter, you're going to need your ID number from that. So that way you can isolate your own meter from all the other <laughs> meters that are being broadcasted. And you can actually, if you're curious about the uh, frequency ranges that this uses and um, some more technical data. You can look this up. Uh, the FCC ID is SK9C1A-3. And we'll look it up real qu quick to get a glimpse of what's going on with this thing. Uh, I use the dash three model. Um, and then right off the bat, you can tell that it uses the 909 to 922 megahertz range. And if you wanted to know all the frequencies it uses in that range, the channels, um, you could dig through the documentation and there's usually a list somewhere in here listing them all. So these meters use something called frequency hopping. Uh, here's the list. So here's a list of all the frequencies it uses. And so your meter will uh, broadcast a message on one of these channels. And then a few minutes later, when it broadcasts again, it will pick a different channel. And one of the reasons for this is because there's other meters in the neighborhood broadcasting. Um, and if they're all broadcasting on the same channel, you would get collisions and they would kind of jam each other out. Um, so they kind of bounce around and hop all over so that uh, the receiver can get uh, more information. Um, if you wanted to see what this looked like in real time, um, just a note real fast that when you run uh, RTL AMR by default, it uh, centers out at 912, 912 megahertz approximately, so that if you have a RTL SDR dongle um, with a small bandwidth, um, you'll still be able to capture in that range. So all these little bursts right here are meters that are broadcasting their um, information. And you can see they're hopping all over. And just in this spectrum, um, so I'm missing uh, all the broadcasts that are happening above this like 913 range, but that's all right. So I might be missing, um, you know, a chunk of messages that are coming from my meter, but eventually my meter will broadcast in this range sooner or later. Um, so I can get the data. So this works fine, these settings so far. And as I mentioned, it depends on your dongle too. This is what I use. So you're gonna need an RTL SDR dongle to pick up these radio waves. And then to run RTL AMR, you're going to need a Linux environment. Um, I suggest if you don't already have a Linux environment to just create a bootable USB stick um, and put all the programs on there or to get a Raspberry Pi. I don't suggest using a virtual machine because you can sometimes have hardware problems from that. And the GitHub goes into detail about how to set it up. It's actually pretty easy. Um, and like I mentioned, there's other videos on how to set this up and stuff like that. But there's a few details that I need to go over that helped me out. Um, so by default, when you run the program, if you don't change any options, it will just broadcast the standard consumption message. And the only really valuable thing you'll get from that is your consumption, which is a grand total of the kilowatt hours you've used, you've used at your home. What we're interested in is this interval data message because it broadcasts an array that has the um, energy usage of your home over the past three to four hours. So that's really valuable. 
And then um, I'll be talking a lot about kilowatt hours and decawatt hours. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on how to convert between what, what your wattage is and the kilowatt hours um, and what that equation is. I was more interested in what the wattage is because the reason why I started looking into this project is we were trying to buy a generator and the question was, do we need a generator that puts out 2,000 watts, a generator that puts out 5,000 watts, um, etc. So I wanted to know how many watts the house was using at a certain time, um, not just the kilowatt hours. So we had to do some simple math to convert between the two, which I'll show. So I already got RTLMR set up. Um, I ran it for a few minutes before I started filming this. And so when you run it, this is kind of self-explanatory, these options. Here's my ID that I wrote down from the meter. And we want the IDM messages. And you start running it, and it will take a few minutes before you start picking up your first message. Um, again, like I showed, because we're only picking up a small section of where it's broadcasting from. And some of the, most of these values we can ignore. The ones that are most important are uh, the last consumption count, which is kind of like the grand total of kilowatt hours you've used over, I don't know if this is how many months this is or how it adds up, but I don't really look, we won't be looking at this value very much. Um, it's this array is where all the goodies are. <clears throat> so to explain this array right here, oh, and I should also mention, this isn't kilowatt hours. This is decawatt hours. So if you're familiar with your metric prefixes, uh, you would need to uh, move the decimal place over two spaces. Yeah, so the kilo and move over to two. So actually you would have a decimal place between the five and the four. So it's actually 46,965.46 kilowatt hours. And the same goes for this array right here, this interval data. This 11 is actually 11 decawatt hours. Um, and this 12 would be 12 decawatt hours. And what these intervals are, are it's broken down into five minute brackets. So in the last five minutes, the most recent five minutes, um, my home has used 11 decawatt hours. That was energy consumption. And in the five minute period before that period, my home used 12 uh, decawatt hours. And in the period before that, my home used seven decawatt hours. And you can, to help explain this, if I take this value 10 and you subtract it from this, you'll get the consumption from the previous um, time period. And so if I was to subtract 21 from this, I would end up with this. If I was to add these two up and find that packet from 10 minutes ago, it would equal to that. So you can see how this array, it's basically just the differentials between these consumptions. So these are all in decawatt hours. Um, I am most interested in what the wattage is. So to convert that, um, I can convert the decawatt hours to just regular watt hours. If I move the decimal place over one more, oh wait, that's not right. It would come out to 210, this 21. And then we have to, if you know basic algebra and whatnot, we would be reversing this equation. Um, so it would come out to divided by the time in hours. Uh, so because it's a five minute period, we should divide five by five minutes by 60 minutes to get the hours. And there's the wattage that I used. Not the wattage hours, but the wattage. So my home is using an average of 2,520 watts in that five minute period. So if I had a generator 
that was rated for 3,000 watts, it would be able to power my house during that, that period right there. And then in the five minutes before that, you can see that I was using about half that wattage, etc. down the road, down the, and then down this line. And then this goes all the way to close to four hours is what it's measuring. So I can look back over a four hour period and see when the energy was using. And you can, if you know what's going on in your house, you can like see periods where the oven was on and there was cooking. You'll see periods where like your heater kicks on and stuff like that. If you have a space heater, you'll really see the um, value jump up. And we'll use that to calculate what the home's usage is over that period. Um, so for this interval right here, what you'll notice is that like this packet got broadcast twice in a, in a certain period. <clears throat> so it got broadcast more than once in that five minute period. So if you wanna know exactly when, uh, when this interval started on the meter, uh, you have to use this transit time offset so you would have to, which is 1 16th of a second since the first transmission of the, what would be the most recent interval. So you would take this value and divide it by 16 and that would give you seconds. And then you would subtract those seconds from that timestamp of that packet. And that will give you the time that the interval started, um, the next five minute interval started. So as you can see, to like compute this, you have to like get out your calculator and all that jazz and it can be really confusing. Um, so what I did is I wrote a really simple script that will uh, compute this anyways. So I'll run this program real quick. You have to start RTLTCP in another window. And then this meter yeah we have to make sure the format is in JSON there we go I do wrote a quick little JavaScript program that should do all the computations for us so now the program is running and we wait for it to receive a packet from my meter and it will hopefully do all the decoding for us and I will highlight some important information about it. Uh, so while this runs, I can show a picture from a previous uh, screenshot I did to highlight some information about these intervals. So when it does finally catch a packet, it will just print out this, uh, this little uh, comma separated list um, showing when the five minute period, these five minute intervals started and ended and what the wattage was. Um, I've updated the script a little bit as you'll see and it, puts out a little bit more information. But I wanna highlight here is that at first when I started seeing these values, my big question was, are these an, an average of the electrical usage um, in that five minute period? Or is it the highest wattage that was used in that five minute period? And I'm pretty sure, um, it was really hard for me to find documentation explaining it, but I'm pretty sure it's an average value. Um, and to help understand this is, so in this four, from 445 to 450, I ran my microwave, which draws about a thousand watts. Um, I ran the microwave for one minute and the value that got returned from that five minute period, even though I ran the microwave for just one minute in that five minutes, came back to 1200 watts that was being used. And in the next five minute period, I ran the microwave for three minutes and it raised it up to um, 1920 watts. So I'm pretty sure it's a uh, average of what the wattage is in that five minute period. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it's the average value. Oh, so here we go, I caught a packet. <clears throat> 
And what it does now is I also report the kilowatt uh, watt hours also. So if you want to throw this in a spreadsheet real fast, you can make a graph and then you can also add up all your kilowatt hours for this four hour period. Um, and it lists the start time of the five minute bracket, the end time of the five minute bracket, how many kilowatt hours was used in that five minute bracket. And then it does that um, quick equation I did to find out what the average wattage was in that five minute period. Um, so like periods right here, I think the oven was running here the oven is still running. Um, here the, the oven was running all afternoon because there was cooking a roast. <laughs> um, so you get an idea of what this information is. So yeah, just using this uh, that program and that script, um, you can just plug this into a spreadsheet. There's some people out there that wrote these fancy programs where you can put this in a database and throw up these like really cool graphical programs but I just wanted to know real quick what the usage was. So I just based it off of this um, and that will give you an idea of what you would need if you were like shopping for a generator. One of the important things I should note though, going back to that whole average value um, thing is it may not um, explain what type of generator you need because this is an average value and it's not re reporting what the highest wattage was in that five minute period, um, you might be missing the requirements you need for something called starting watts. Um, so I leave it on you to kind of research the difference between starting watts and running watts, but basically starting watts are these extra watts needed for two to three seconds to start motor driven products. Um, if I were to click this link, it brings up the spreadsheet. So a typical refrigerator freezer just uses 700 watts when it's running. But when you first plug it in, um, and I think maybe when the compressor kicks on too, it requires 2,200 watts for a few seconds. And that value won't get reported in the uh, values that get outputted here because it's averaged in into that five minute period. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. You got to kind of like do some research on your appliances to find out if they do have running watts. Um, some of these electronics down here don't require it, but if you've got a furnace fan or whatnot, then you need to do the research and make sure that your generator can compensate for the uh, starting watts also. So yeah, I hope that helps out. Um, I'll throw that little JavaScript that I wrote. I'll put that on my GitHub and hopefully this helps some people out. Thanks for watching.